Isn't Volt an NC outfit? Uh, they are, yes. And that with that, we are now live. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I am joined with joined by uh, Snipe again tonight from Outfit of AT, the leader of that outfit. So he will, I'm sure, be talking about Vanu. What I know best, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Outfit War match. A new conglomerate has taken control of Indar. And congratulations to the NC on the Indar alert, I guess. Traitor. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I would say it to whoever won, okay? Yeah, so, um, looking at the outfits, I know uh, SKL had two of the same matches over the last two days. They had... Or the last two weeks, I guess. They had 1TR versus SKL. And then they had 1TR versus SKL. Um, I'm not exactly sure who mid fought. I can look that up real quick so we can take a look at those matches. Yeah, unfortunately, I've been, I was out of town last week. And so I have not uh, been able to observe anything that happened last week. So... So this is week three of the qualifiers. So um, we're halfway through the qualifiers and um, outfits are looking to continue to build up those wins to get them into uh, the preliminaries. Excuse me, the playoffs. <laughs> that is correct. Um, so like it's been going, there's uh, going to be two teams, red versus blue. Um, we'll probably be calling them by their colors. Um, but we'll see. Um, all outfit resources are allowed, minus the Bastion and Colossus. Um, the map is balanced on both sides, so there's not a better side um, from one side to the other. Um, and in order to win the match, you either need to capture the enemy's team's nexus base, or you need to capture, hold the most bases at the end of the 45-minute timer. So... Just a little overview on how the match will work for those who are tuning in for the first time. Now, who do you think is going to win this match, Snipe? Uh, I mean, that is a good question. So uh, for those that aren't aware, um, mid is actually a combination of four different outfits. Um, all of them I'm not too super familiar with. Um, so I think I might just have to go... With uh, SKL, um, just because they're who I'm familiar with, and we know in week one they put up a really good fight. Um, week two, they actually had a repeat due to the issue with the scheduling, um, and they lost that one. Because again, I, I, again, I haven't been, I, I wasn't able to watch any of the matches last week, so I'm not sure how mid did um, as far as their overall score and how they actually played. Yes, and I was not actually watching that match. I believe it was taking place when I was casting a match with Mr. Finger, um, who I'm sure is going to be in chat doing something. Um, but I'm looking at the past schedule. It looks like mid played GoTR and KN1. And KN1 was is undefeated, I believe. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Um, and just to uh, make people aware, once again, we got a little bit of confusion on the colors here. We got SKL on the alpha side which is the red side by the default colors of the map, whereas uh, mid, who is TR, is on the blue side, the omega side. Um, so there's still some work to be done, I think, on the coloring. Um, I know that they're, they kind of hijacked the code to get the um, ability to do these 1v1s, so hopefully we will see improvement in that as they continue to uh, work on things surrounding Outfit Wars. Yes, um, it is still a little bit of a janky system, so it's going to be changing. Um, we're making the best we can do. The devs know of the issues, so you don't need to tell us who that there's an issue. We know the devs know they are working towards this, resolving those issues. And as a friendly reminder, that makes a good point. We are purely here to um, cast the match and help provide some commentary as best we can. We are not actually associated with the devs at all. Um, so uh, don't complain to us if something is janky that is outside of our ability to do anything concerning it. Uh, 
Um, and yes, there has been reports of um, matches yesterday and today of some really bad lag and hitching, even worse than the first, or at least as far as the first week that I experienced. Um, so uh, be aware that the good, well, best case scenario regarding that is both teams have to contend with it. So at least they're on evil footing there. Obviously, it sucks in a first-person shooter. You don't want to have to deal with that type of stuff. Um, but it's what we have to deal with. So good luck to them, and hopefully they can manage to uh, not let it disrupt them too much. That is correct. And I'm seeing someone in chat saying that mid is a combination of POSLA, Vault, Froze, and Tal. I recognize Froze from OVVO so and Tal from OVVO. And Vault, yeah. I believe, is a Vanu outfit from... They're a NC, while back. They're NC, so it's Frost, the Anounted oh. Legion, Pulsar Service of Araxis, and the Northeastern Voltigers. Okay, so they're NC. I do apologize for that. Yep, so that does... I mean, I'm I'm going to lead towards mid, I feel like, with taking, a, uh, taking the win here. With four outfits, you know, each outfit brings 12 members... You have basically a squad that works together continuously, and then you just got to have one guy kind of get them to work together as much as he can. So see how it works out that way with the match. Um, yep, so they did lose to Kane one last week. So that was the one loss they had. They did beat GoTR, and then SKL won against 1TR and lost against 1TR. So we have both sides of the spectrum there uh, for one SKL. So hopefully they can learn from their... 1.5 matches and bring it into this match compared to the others. I know you weren't around much last week, but I'm still starting. I'm still loving the SATCOM base. I really do enjoy this base over here. Oh, interesting. The, uh, the, I don't even know how to describe it. The <laughs> beheaded tech plant. Yes. I, I I would love for this to come to life in some form or fashion. It would need to be changed a little bit. Um, the spawn kind of would need to be changed a little bit, but I think it's a really good design base. It gives you three distinct ways of fighting over a tech plant that we normally don't see. That would be one th cool thing to see them do. I mean, I know they've a couple of the bases they've tried tweaking, the large bases, they tried tweaking them to mix them up a little bit, but to see more of that, you know, just take the skeleton, take the frame, and just do some crazy stuff and really mix it up um, at each of the large outposts. So making kind of like every tech plant um, similar but different just to mix it up would actually be kind of a interesting thing to see. Yep. And, I mean, they have done it. You know, you've seen different bases with changes. Not even the tech plant. We have the ESA tech plant. But they did it with the amp stations. And they try to do it with the biolabs, but I think the tech plant would probably be the best one to do it on over the other two primary bases that we fight over. Yeah. Um, we are approaching five minutes till match starts. A uh, reminder to all of our viewers, um, we do have a one minute delay on the stream out of respect for the contestants to limit the ability for any stream sniping of that sort to happen. Um, but we are monitoring chat, so we will attempt to engage with you um, as we see cut questions pop up. The lag! It's uh, I'm already it's, hitching a it, bit. It's pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I, In all fairness, I would not want to be the one competing right now on this. <sighs> I, I agree. Um, so, out of the starting bases, which one would you say is your favorite from these three that you would drop your pop on. I know you've only been casting a one match with me so far, but you have been here a little bit. Ooh, um, the, the match I casted and some of the feedback I got that middle base is a, um, granite head is kind of a, one of those slow burn, just keep ticking away at it. it it's kind of really easy to slow burn that uh, and capture it later on in the match. I think SATCOM might be, would be my play. Um, all honestly, um okay yeah but but i mean one thing though too is granite head gives you the two links whereas um same thing with peter george while well, satcom only gives you one link so if you're one of those people who are really good at you know forward deploying and constantly forward capping having the links might be a better play than 
you know, going for a specific base type. Well, that would just be Granite Head. I guess Bitter Gorge has the connection to Granite Head, which matters, but would it matter? Because you'd be able to still attack it from your east side of the map. So that would help you there. Um, I have seen uh, in a couple of matches, I've seen quite a few drops on Bitter Gorge in the stealing of Bitter Gorge in the last 20 or 30 seconds or so, because they can really come in and take that base easily. Or not easily, but the points are out in the open. There's no like, it's just a double stack with the point on top for two of them. And then the alpha points just on a balcony. I don't know. I, I don't know what you would call this. A raised elevation open to the sky with a slight awning cover. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, it's not really a patio. It's not really a deck. It's I, a walkway, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, ironically, I haven't actually personally observed much fighting at Bitter Gorge. It seems um, in the one match I casted and um, two of the matches I watched, it just it did not play out where there, there was a whole lot of fighting here. So um, I know uh, from our first week together, uh, SKL, the uh, that tunnel at Slate Canyon, um, that's a little sneaky spot um, on the map. Have you uh, found any others? I have seen a few others that I found. I'm I won't say where they are just yet, um, but I can show you um where they are if you'd like. Um that is um but we have just got the pull back in from the chat and it is split six to six on SKL versus mid winning the match, so we should I should have added a third option of hitching and seen who would win that option. <laughs> So there's also a nice little can uh, canyon on Argent Pass side as well. It's not as well protected as the one over by Slate Hold, but it's still a pretty good canyon. I mean, if you're going to be ESFing this, you're going to have to be precision to actually ESF into this uh, cannon here. Um, I've seen quite a bit of people open. Oh, the hitch comes hiding some sundies in a few places around uh granite head i saw one stealth sunday that was parked kind of where i am now i don't know if you can see where i am uh i put the squad waypoint there and it was a cloak bus sunday and it was just sitting there and they were just dropping in his light assaults and able to drop it oh in. nice we are 40 seconds away from match start which uh which side are you going to be observing first i'll go to the blue side Omega side, which Omega. I, which I will, will be up. mid. Yep. I'm seeing a lot of mosquitoes. And two buses. Not sure how it looks over on you. Oh, I see a Devrish. How's uh, it look all, over on your side? All aircraft. I don't see any land vehicles. Now, we saw in the, um, the first match, they... SKL stayed in the air for quite a while, but then once they kind of lost that, uh -uh. they never really regained air superiority. Again, I'm not sure what they did last week, but I'm curious to see what, how they're going to utilize their aircraft this time. And we are go. Match has started. Yep. It, it takes about five to ten seconds. Don't want to hit that gate until it actually pings. There it goes. Now we're live. I think hopefully the hitching doesn't hit him too bad in this initial air fight because trying to fly around these mountains in an air in a dueling would be very difficult. Seeing large parts of the SKL are heading towards granite. I mean, it's just a massive fight over the air right now, and I think SKL is winning the fight. I saw some mosquitoes drop, so maybe they're actually going for the points Interesting. on Granite so some Head. Of these, some of these SKL gals, they actually don't have troops in them. It looks like they're going to be battle galling, maybe waiting for the uh, size to be shot down, spawn in, then drop. It could be. Well, I see, do see repair buses. I am getting a red texture on some of these. Is that just that's uh, the That's the anti-lock-on uh, module. Oh, okay. So, makes sense. That's actually very nice because if you don't really, if you don't have a whole lot of good pilots, you're going to be forced to use your lock-ons. And if you can't use a lock-on, that means your pilots are going to be kind of worthless. 
Looks like uh, Mid decided to drop on a bus with Maxis over here on the Bitter Gorge Charlie Point. And they have two Sundays, but the Sundays are being lit up already by the friendly aircraft or the SKL aircraft. Just two not, repair buses. So not a single person is at SATCOM. Neither team sent someone to ghost cap it. Wow. I mean, uh, SKL just has a Valk showing up now with the probably going to drop a guy to begin that cap. The buses are dying quickly, but the deployed bus is actually hidden over here at Bitter Gorge, so it hasn't even taken any damage yet, and they're just using their pair buses to keep it alive if it does take any damage. You are better than this. So Granite is currently two points SKL, now three points SKL. Okay. Yeah, over here at uh, Bear Gorge, we have all three points being held by Mid. And Mid is trying to use the... I forget what their Empire-specific launcher is, where it shoots the six rockets. Striker. That, striker, thank you. But the anti-lock-on was actually doing some work because they it won't lock on, so the aircraft doesn't have to worry about it. So we now got one point Mid. Looks like another point is slipping towards Mid. So it, looks like uh, they, it looks like at Granite Head, they're actually kind of bouncing around and flipping the points both ways. Okay. SKL has managed to drop in and take the Bravo point here at Bitter Gorge. Now they have to make a push. They have a minute and 20 seconds to make a push over to one of the other points and take it. It looks like they're trying to push towards the Alpha point here on the deck. Hopefully they can actually get the kills off here and kill out and take the point. But they're losing the Bravo point already. Don't see a. Oh. There's a bus there. Looks like mid also finally sent someone. Oh, nope. Disregard. It is still only SKL over at Satcom. Got a minute 20 left on that one. Uncontested. Yep. We have five seconds left here at Bitter Gorge, and it looks like SKL's maybe going to hit the B point, but it won't be enough to stop the timer, and it will be flipping to mid. Giving them the first capture of the match. With now that could be a mis that could be a mistake because they only own two points at Granite Head right now, which means uh, mid can now deploy over there because that base is still neutral. So there's no local spawns. Yeah, you got to have the spawn though. If you don't have the spawn, it won't matter. Or or do you think they go to Satcom? Forty seconds? Can they sweep in and steal it at the last second? Uh, 40 seconds. I think they can sweep in skill. It looks like SKL's maybe doing some drops, trying to get the timer started at Bitter Gorge. If they get that timer started, then they can't push forward to attack Argent Pass and we'll actually hold them here for at least a couple more seconds. I'm going to head over to Bitter Gorge. Or not Bitter the Gorge. mid did come to SATCOM. It looks like they dropped to try to hack out a vehicle, but they immediately got shot down. Actually, I'm not sure what they were trying to do. They could kind of drop behind the spawn room. So oh. Single guy at mid, 15 seconds left. Oh, there you go. Drop on the roof. Theoretically, oh. they'll take one point, but now the question is, can they take another in the next 20 seconds? Looks like SKL has oh. managed to secure the alpha point down here at Granite Head, which gives them two, which, oh, nope, they weren't able to secure it. I apologize. And SATCOM goes to SKL. All right. Uh, they were not there quick enough, and they actually failed. They started taking B, but then they got wiped on B again. Oh, and there it goes. Uh, SKL lost the Bravo point here at Granite Head, but they managed to secure the Alpha point instead, so the timer will still be ticking down. With two minutes and 50 seconds, they need to try and get on that Alpha point, but Mid has just done a massive drop onto the Charlie point, and it looks like SKL has responded by dropping a Valk on them as well. Maybe they can wipe this and keep the point for SKL. You are better. <laughs> There's only two SKL members here left, and down they both go, which is going to wipe them, giving mid two of the three points here, but it is still a two-minute cap before any base can take this, or any outfit can take this base. Are we seeing any fights outside right now? No, no fights on any of the adjacent bases right now, so. I mean, there is two squads um, worth of people, probably one squad each over at SATCOM. Looks like SKL has decided they're going to take the Bravo point back. 
Mid is trying to get some zombies up, but the zombies are being mowed down as soon as they come up. Not doing any work there. And they're managing to hit both points right now. Flip. Oh, they only got one of them, but they're flipping them to SKL. Now they just need to secure the final point and they will be able to capture the space in a short period so, of time. So interestingly, it doesn't look like either side is really doing the whole, you know, squad of air. I only see two mosquitoes currently up. Ah. I don't see any of SKL's aircraft alive. No, there goes Master Jiraiya, who is the force leader for mid. He was standing, probably trying to direct people, and he died on the Charlie point here at Granite Head, which is going to cause it all to fall right now to SKL. But, oh no, mid is back on the point at Charlie point. They managed to wipe him out with a galaxy drop. So now, so now the question is going to be, where's SKL going to go? Which point are they going to try to grab? If I was them, I would go Alpha Point. You've got one minute to get one of the points. But they're they're coming up as zombies, so they're still here fighting over the Charlie Point. And it may actually turn to the SKL after all this with the zombies coming up. Yeah, but they're flipping with B, so they still need to get on A. They need to get, yep. a, you know, maybe a half squad on A. Oh, mid's coming up with zombies, and there's only one SKL left. Get an info in there, scout it out. Looks like they're trying to make drops, but they need to get two of the points. They're hitting Bravo point right now. They need to get on the Charlie point if they want to take the base. That, that's too late. It's going to go yep. to mid. Yep, mid's going to take it. So mid manages to secure two of the three starting neutral bases. Leading SKL now, they're going to have to fight their way forward to attack the rest. The... Um Looks like SKL has managed to start a cap at Hydro Hydroponics Compound. So they will be starting that cap. Hopefully they can push forward. I mean, even if you lose the first two bases, two of the first three, if you can take the Warp Gate base, the Nexus base, does it really matter? All that matters is holding the most at the end, right? So. I mean, it's true. I mean, we got, you know, that was only nine minutes of play time. So we still got plenty of match left. Um, as long as they stay on top of it. So currently right now on uh, SKL top killer, we got Princess Paul, 1, 2, 3, 22 kills. And for mid, we got Kid Canuck with 19 kills. I wonder if it's going to be the Beetlejuice versus the MSWR or MCR. Or M no, it is the MSWR. So SKL has decided to redeploy. They, it looks like they have a lot of force here and they're attacking Granite Head in force. Mid has decided to push forward to attack Argon oh. Pass. With Hydroponics is almost already halfway capped. Let me go over yep. there and see what's going on. I'm hoping mid decides to redeploy here to Granite Head. If not, that's going to give another cap that they can hit Bitter Gorge and start a back cap behind mid if they do not respond in time. So it is uh, basically an even fight over here. Mid right. is trying to push in. Lots of uh, SKL medics are doing their job, keeping their guys up. Now we're at the two-minute mark, so now it's halfway through. Oh, there's oh. one. Mano is with you. Oh, I think it, maybe SKL's last medic just went down. Let me see. Oh, they got a res grenade off, though, so they're back yep. up. I still think I don't think they're going to be able to hold us for the two minutes. Um, unless I mean, it's on another squad. I mean, if you only can hold it for enough to get Granite Head off, that gives you Granite Head, which is a oh. base. Actually, did they just wipe mid? They did. It looks like mid was wiped off here. It looks like they may have they, they may have one more guy outside. Oh, the beacon was just destroyed, but the uh, SKL beacon's still alive. That might have been a mistake by mid point. Nope, mid got a guy to drop on the roof, but he didn't. They, yeah, but they're not going for it. Do they not know it's up there? That's a mid beacon on the roof. SKL's is on the ground uh, in the corner. Oh, good call. Sorry. See, I, I knew the coloring scheme was going to mess me up today. <laughs> but... Mid isn't killing the beacon. They're just letting the beacon for SKL stand. So SKL's just dropping back in. Nope. Oh. Francium tried to get around and get off a different doorway, but one of the SKL members saw him and decided to take him out. So At SKL is reinforcing. They did bring a second squad here. We also got TR air. Yep. I was just going to say Granite Head has fallen to Lots of TR air. SKL. Balls, balls, outs, or mid is 
dropping in. Victory they are trying to do a last uh, minute push. Fight Looks like possibly three squads of mid are here now. Uh, I have two squads of mid here at Argent Pass. And we got a minute 48 on Argent Pass with only 27 seconds left on uh, Hydroponics. So Hydroponics will fall first, which means that mid will have to respawn in kind to resecure Nexus Omega if SKL decides to push forward and immediately attack that base. But SKL is already attacking Bitter Gorge Garrison, which is only a 2 minute and 10 second cap if they hold all three points. So they will effectively cut off mid from Argent Pass oh. if they manage to oh. take Argent Pass. Six seconds left and they started uh, flipping it. Is SKL going to be able to re-get capture it? Trying to get in there to see the res grenade galore. SKL did get it back. SKL did get it back. They should get this. So at this point, do they go ahead and just redeploy out and let them start the cap here? And they can push another base through while it burns? Or do they stay and defend? Uh, over here at Argent Pass, the res grenade galore is going off as you were just saying. SKL has responded to this base and is actually taking it and they've managed to wipe mid off the point. I'm assuming the mid guys said, you know what? We're going to redeploy out of here. We're going to go try and fight somewhere else and take it. Oh, mid is still, there's one medic on mid. He's he's throwing resonates. Will he get anybody? Looks like all the guys redeployed except for two. And nope, the guys that are from mid are immediately dying. The squad of mid is now at Bitter Gorge. They are currently flipping two of the points. So oh, SKL was coming here. They did not move fast. So mid had made use of the Lodestar module and parked a galaxy on top of Argent's past spawn room. Interesting. And I don't know if SKL knew it was deployed or not because it, it is smoking. So they need to respawn in kind and get some kills off on this. They also have a bulldog there that could face the spawn room and shoot the spawn room if they're actually getting hit from the spawn room. But it looks like SKL managed to get a Sunday here as well. They're still fighting over the point. Once they kill that galaxy, I think SKL will be able to resecure this point very efficiently. And the lag. There it goes. Galaxy's now on fire. I don't see an engineer. Oh, there is an engine trying to throw repair grenades at it. Will it be enough to save the galaxy? is no longer on fire. SKL once again has two points at Bitter Gorge. They're taking the third point. Looks like uh, Hydroponics is taking a little bit of a fight as well. I think... They just dropped an SKL Sunderer over here at Bitter Gorge. See if they can get it down before they get wiped. SKL is not really using any real armor. They're not killing this. They have a Sunday back in that uh, tunnel I was telling you about. But mid is just on top with the galaxy, just bombarding them with a bulldog, making sure they can't push up that tunnel and income more mid to so, Argent Pass. Bitter Gorge, 40 seconds. One of their two SKL Sundays went down and that's allowing mid to take back to b point but a and c are still firmly ah, i'm sorry there. about the lag actually a does not look actually defended at all all of that scales at c which is interesting that no one's pushing out to help defend a i think mid has decided that they're going to put a lot of pop here over at argent pass and scale maybe said you know what we can go for the back cap behind them because I don't see SKL responded in kind here, but I don't see them anymore. The Sunday they had here just went yeah. down along with all their yeah. beacons. The pop, it's it's three or four to one at both bases. They, they're they definitely going hard with the um, their respective opposite bases. I'm heading over to hydroponics right now because it looks like there's actually some kind of fight going on here. Oh, yeah. Looks like uh, mid just got back on point here at hydroponics. So wiping out the squad of SKL that was here holding the point. But it is a three minute and 30, three minute and 30 second timer going on. So they will have to fight their way through this. The kills look pretty roughly even along with the revives right now. It looks like 557 kills for SKL to 450 kills for mid. And they're just slowly working their way forward. I don't know if I would call that even. That's like 20% more. Mm. 
compared to some of the other ones I've been seeing where it's like 500 kills or 400 kills more. So SKL did get fitted for Forge. They finally had us, uh, they actually have a Skyguard out here helping defend against that TR air. Ardent Pass though will... I, I'm saying, yep, Argent Pass just fell to Midfit, so now they have a base, but it's cut off. I don't know how that works for this alert system. Um, cause I'm I, assuming it's the same as live. They won't be able to deploy in there unless if they're already in the hex. I'm assuming that too, but how? I, it looks like it also does count towards the territory, so they are getting the territory count for it. Escal just dropped in here. They are wiping them off. Oh, Escal and they're going for that... SKL uh, responded in kind and has wiped them off of hydroponics. Wow. That is a ballsy move considering they have no connection there. I mean, it, I guess. So, Mid just keeps pushing forward. There are now two squads on Nexus Alpha. It, two or more? I I wasn't exactly sure with the pop. I don't. They don't seem to care about trying to re-get their link back. Don't don't worry. Mid has decided that they will drop via Steel Rain onto the point. So SKL is going to need to respond in kind very quickly. Now, if Mid's deciding to do this, maybe you leave one or two guys to go and resecure the slate hold. Maybe even start a cap on Nexus. So if you manage to slow down this timer, you actually do get the cap. Oh, and oh, there. OS. OS at Nexus Alpha, and it looks like all of mid is here. I would agree with that statement. And all their maxes just died, but they're going to be able to get res because they're. Oh, but do you see what I see here? SKL is responding in force. The maxes and the infantry, they are going There's for the, the point. TRs. There's mid OS. Yeah, but SKL's just got to get on point. It's going to kill both groups maxes. Whoever as, has as, less. As an SKL. Um, Steel Rain came in too. I think I think that hurt him. I think it pushed him straight forward into the TR's guns. It, it, it did, but at the same time, it did give them the ability to get in the point. It pushed them further on point because it gave them that little push. Yeah. The question is, how many red grenades did they bring? Well, I mean, at this point, if you can make mid use all of their res grenades on this push and you can make another push coming in, that will do it for you because they won't be able to respawn. I think SKL is slowly working their way into the point. I'm I'm seeing mid dying and them not coming up with SKL being able to stay alive because they do have that close spawn. And keep in mind that this is a very long cap. The, the defenders definitely have advantage at this base. I would agree. SKL is slowly working their way closer to the point. They're just slowly wiping them off. I saw a bunch of mid red grenades go off, even though the only ones dead are maxes, so that might have been a waste of resources. Yep, I'm seeing more and more going off, trying to find a good angle to capture this fight, but there's just so many angles going off here, and it does look like mid will be able to hold this, but... I am, so I am seeing a lot of almost dead uh, mid maxes. I don't know if they brought enough engineers. I'm seeing the res grenades, I'm seeing the Punisher. Punisher's a uh, great weapon. Each, each flank, SKL pushed in pretty hard. They all died, and I'm not seeing a res grenade go off to get them up. They may they, be I trying mean, to... in the room. They're up, there's one. They're slow. They're working their way forward. He is get behind, get behind the defenders, cause them to start, stop, you know, have them stop looking at the uh, doors. Uh, it allows others to push in. Yep. They're, SKL is managing to get some kills here, but the mid medics are getting them up. And the, I mean, the chain gun is just so devastating at these uh, corners. But three, there three goes down a max. Two maxes are dead on the front door. Can they manage to make work of that? The mech's trying to revive they're them, pushing but. pushing in right now. That north door, they're pushing in. Here they come. The maxes are coming up, but there's no engineers to repair them. They're having to pull off of other doors to try and resecure this door. Hopefully, SKL can get guys in those doors. Another squad uh, spawned in, and they're trying to push that east door again. Uh, yep. And they're hitting them from behind. The res grenades are coming out. The frag grenades another, are coming out. Another TROS. 
And that's going to do it. They no longer have any more OSs for TR, so. 15 minutes. Oh, and there goes SKL. Yep. But SKL, I mean, they do have 15 minutes. They can build two more. Each group can build another one. That might have been a waste on SKL's part, but. I, guess I mean, it's a better safe than sorry. Actually, uh, that was, I would say that is the best move they can do. They just need to hold this now for the four minutes, get the resecure, and then they can no longer be touched on this base until they manage to push all the way back in. And SKL has already started to capture Nexus Omega, so and, they are already and, started there. And they ghost captain. It looks like no one. I mean, I I just caught it too. No one uh, in mid caught it. They're gonna get a free. It looks like two people are here. Two people are gonna take Slate Canyon in 20 seconds. Yep, uh, mid is trying to repush in hard here, but the maxes are dying before they can even get in the doorway. Res grenades are coming out, but that won't save the maxes. But hey, res grenade, take two steps forward, right? Let's get back to server smash practice. Slate has fallen. And if they are, if the cap is still going, so they did re-secure Nexus Omega. Looks so like they have a uh, half squad here. Uh, SKL only have one guy at Nexus Omega. Hey, I mean, just starting that timer is something, you know what I mean? You've already seen that Mids decided to put everything here, so why not get that timer starting ticking down? I am seeing in chat where people are saying, is it a requirement for the warp gate? I don't believe it is. I believe it's just requirement is just to capture the enemy's... Uh, Nexus base, so it's not actually a capture to have from one warp gate to the other. It just gives you more options to reattack if you lose the initial attack like they did. I wonder what what's a top weapon right now for both sides. I'm seeing a lot uh, of Beetlejuice. Yeah, so Beetlejuice is 282, 30% of their kills, and the uh, Butcher, the T9A, is 160 kills. All right. And I see now the SKL's uh, turn. They're pulling into Nexus Omega. I do see that uh, the SKL is using the Punisher as well, which is actually a great weapon, considering the fact that the adaptive uh, barrel, you can get extra res or extra heals and extra repairs with it. Mid managed to get back on point here at Nexus Alpha. It's currently just sitting. No one's touching the point. There it goes. Now... What's now if you're mid, what is the play you do here? Do you read you pull everything back and go to Nexus Omega? I think you have to. I mean, I it looks like everyone has left Nexus Alpha, so I'm going to be heading over to Omega because yeah, both, both sides are reinforcing in uh, with everything they got, it looks like. Looks like SKL tried to get a, an anvil drop here, but the Banshees killed the anvil before it even hit the ground, which is, Yeah, you know. my, uh, my personal opinion is the anvil need to help. So that's just my personal opinion. Yep. I mean, maybe a rocket, maybe two rockets or something. But. And it looks like some are saying that basically you can take the base if you it's just capturing that base, so. I mean, that is a play that I hadn't considered because I assumed you had to have a connection. Mid is having a... They're slowly working their way into the point. They have a beacon here right on top of the... Right outside the north... Or I guess this is the south... But the front door for this building. <laughs> it's a mere copy. I Give me a break. SKL ambled in a sky guard that's just chilling on the roof. Hey, it's going to be doing some work because there's a lot of air out there that I can see when I was out there. Looking at the point right now, these medics are doing work by getting their guys so back up. 250, if, if with 250 left on the cap, if they can get all their guys in and actually get inside before they get farmed by the air, they, that is easily defendable. That at that point, if you know they have medics who have fresh um, kits, you know, they have plenty of res grenades. The, um, all that stuff, that's, that's definitely defendable. You know, one thing that is great for the Vanu in this situation is the Lasher. It is not a great gun by itself. I know you've been trying to work on it, but 
using it to suppress the doorways they're trying to push in who cares if you only get three or four hits on each person you're going your goal is to just weaken them so that way the other guys can kill them and yeah it sucks you're not the killer but mid they were trying to push in but right now it's actually relatively quiet by the point room uh, skl might get this this might be it this might be match did i mean if you're mid do you you know what? If I was mid, I'd get everyone in galaxies right now and just come in and it's a galaxy drop. You've got 30 seconds to get everyone. Oh, nope. They decided to max crash. They pushed in the front door. They're and working their no way in. And, and this, is, this is where SKL could have used that second OS. That is true. I mean, they could have already been building one, so they may have one up here in another like four or five minutes. So uh, we'll see. That's, that's debatable. I, don't th I, I, I think it has a little more time than that, but... Uh, their first one that they used? So, uh, alright, so... They did... Mid did push in, and there are res grenades still going off, but it seems like SKL still has their... A handle on it. Oh, there goes... Um, the res grenades are still coming out, so mid is still coming up. There's and a, there goes down one of the medics. I... I, I there's a mid intel who was just sitting there not doing anything. I think he thought he was cloaked, but he's not. <laughs> That's unfortunate. 45 seconds. Well, they may be cloaked. Um, I'm not sure if the observer cam will let you see them if they're cloaked or oh, not. Oh, good, good call, good call. Oh, nope. Okay. Yeah, I see a cloaked uh, flash here, and it is definitely cloaked. Hey, it's Princess Ball. He's the, uh, he, well, he was the top of the leaderboard. I don't know if he still is. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure right now. Me, uh, Looks like the up. overlay is kind of bugged. There it goes. Uh, no, he's no longer. Now it's a bagel dude. Ooh, I could go for a bagel. For uh, SKL and M Strike for mid. Mid is trying to push in this front doorway. They're just continuously trying to run in this front Seven doorway. Seconds. Five, four, three, two. There it goes. SKL takes the win. I would say, I mean, I feel like mid's decision to just go all in or nothing to push that point may not have been the best call in my decision if you get it though it's a great play but it's an all or nothing play and it looks like it did not work out for him and i think i think the play is fine the problem was is they let SKL ghost cap and get too far they yep. by the time they responded SKL had already knocked off like two and a half three minutes on the cap they had captured the other base so they had a link from both sides i think that was the bigger issue not necessarily the play itself but they needed to keep a few people in reserve to handle that and they didn't i will say looking at uh the max repair statistics skl did a lot more or mid did a lot more repairs than skl on the uh on the repairs well, itself because they had a full seven minute fight right holding that point whereas skl only had a four minute fight true that is very true Ooh. Um, there we go. Oh, I just glitched into the, uh, downstairs. <laughs> yeah, it's actually easy. I can show you where it is, uh, one time if you want. So, yeah, re revives. Pretty close. Um, let's see here. Spawns. So it seems like mid had a little bit more, um, as far as vehicle spawns. So the Beetlejuice did take up about 31% of the kills. The Butcher was 19.7, followed by the MSWR. And Punisher. I, I think the Punisher was a great one. Let's see here. Mid, definitely more max, more kills via their maxes. But again, I think that that could just be contributed to, you know, the time. Um... And surprisingly, mid had less air kills. When, uh, when that says air, is that uh, all kills as air? or is I that... believe it is all kills as air, so maybe... So the fact that mid did have more aircraft up for longer in the fight, I'm actually kind of surprised. Well, at the same time, though, SKL managed to hold the air at the start as hey guys. opposed to mid. Greetings. How's it going? 
Good. How about you? After that, uh, you guys managed to get that win out. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Alrighty. So mid will be joining us here in just a moment. Um. So uh, give us just a moment while we uh, hopefully get him in here. Um, I guess if you want to start asking him um, some questions tonight real quick while we wait. Well, first off, go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers. Oh, uh, I'm Calamity. I uh, FC'd uh, SKL today. So, uh, what? Uh, talk us through your kind of plan here. Um, just sure. your initial thoughts and kind of what you wanted to accomplish at the beginning. Yeah. Um, basically, at the start, we were going for Granite Head. That was our main thing. We actually didn't end up getting it at the right off the hop, but um, we went for Granite Head while contesting the other two bases. Uh, uh, it, it didn't work great. We, we had a bit of a bump along the way. I, I thought we had capped Granite Head at one point when we just hadn't, so that was an issue. Um, but at, off the opener, we knew mid generally didn't like to do much air. We were kind of concerned they might pull a whole bunch of armor. Um, so we had some, some plans for that, but, uh, yeah. And then from there on, we just basically put a couple of squads on each lane and let them go to work basically. And, and it worked out for the most part. And I mean, they, that's <laughs> the timer going pretty far um, mm -hmm. on your Nexus base. Were, were you worried at all? Were you? Yep. <laughs> there's, there's a bit of worry for sure. Um, just because it's, it's stressful having a, the other team on your, on your warp gate base for sure. Uh, we kind of knew that they didn't have any sustain, like they didn't have any buses left or beacons. So it was kind of just a matter of time before we had cracked their hold. Um, and that's, that's how it played out thankfully for us. Um, and, so, uh, yeah. So because. Did that factor in your decision to go ahead and send those like three or four bodies to go do the ghost caps? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah and that was kind of huge for us because we had just two people on Slate and then just like one or two on uh, uh, Nexus Alpha or Nexus Omega. And uh, that allowed us to to make that last push at the end afterwards. It was kind of a gamble because we were losing a few people, but uh, it was prob it, it paid off for us. I mean, you would, you know... <laughs> Oh, two, three, four people. Well, four people is what, like three point eight percent of your population. Like that's those numbers can matter, and especially in a moment like that. And I mean, we were so involved with it, we actually missed it. I, I finally caught on that you guys were back capping with like twenty seconds left, <laughs> um, which might have been the same with mid, or maybe they just they wanted all in, um, and they were like, you know, maybe this is it, right? Go big yeah. or go home. Um, so we'll have to see once they get in here kind of what their thoughts were in that moment. They are real close, and they did real, really well getting set up in there with Maxes and shit, because you probably saw in our last hole, we tried to get Maxes, but they had vehicles and stuff up, so we just, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't. We couldn't get, like, a really, we couldn't get a lockdown hold, but it ended up working out for us. Well, and you had the you had the benefit, and this is, I called it out in the stream while it was happening, you, um, you kind of had a four-minute cap because you had already started the cap before the fight mm -hmm. really got intense, whereas they basically had the full seven-minute hold. Um, and so I think that definitely played a role in how theirs ended up and yours did, because um, you were able to... You had you know, you know had three whole extra minutes to whittle them down and slowly kill their maxes and slowly push in, um, whereas there were, you know, three minutes left. That That's a lot of time um, in this game, so... Yeah, um, that's a good point. So uh, once again, I so I uh, I actually streamed SKL's first week. I was not around last week, um, and there was some talk about working on your air game. Um, mm. And in this match, you, other than the opening, you once again didn't really have air. Is that, you know, kind of explain that? Is that ha had to do with you guys facing mid? Did you guys try that last week? Like, where, where's the, you know, where's your thoughts on the air game currently for Alpha Oh man, well, like absolutely, air is a really big deal 
um, but it's just really, really hard to organize because uh, we have like maybe four to six pilots in the whole team who are really confident with flying. So we've been talking about getting like setting up a flex squad. Again, as, as you mentioned with mid, um, we knew they weren't big into vehicles, so we didn't put a whole lot of emphasis on on trying to organize air. But in our second match against 1GR, uh, what we tried to do is basically like split a squad between air and infantry. And like neither were able to do much at all. Basically, was the was the result. Uh, and then we lost that match pretty hard because we weren't contesting air very well. And we weren't contesting infantry very well either. So it's just it's difficult because like we have, we do have a few pilots, but also there are a lot of our best infantry shooters too. So it's just, ah, I mean it, that, it's it, difficult. I mean that's and that's the choice. Where do you put that resource? Because you got forty eight bodies. What are you gonna do with them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so, not a um, live server where you can just throw 150 people at one point. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to ask you about the um, the OSs. Yeah, yeah. Do you, obviously, in the end, it worked out. Were you a little worried you wasted that second OS and could have used it on your Nexus attack? Yeah, that was like... I don't want to say it was an impulse. It was kind of like a split-second call that... At that same second, we started clicking the point, so it was like, fuck. <laughs> pardon, pardon my language. Uh, but All good. Yeah. Um, that, that second one was, was not the best. Not the best play. Would have liked to have that on the next base. But, but as you said, I mean, it takes half a second, tenth of a second to call on an OS. Hindsight is twenty twenty. so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I really don't have much questions. Um, obviously, based on what we're seeing, the beetle just needs to be nerfed because it always seems to be the most popular weapon. Of course, I was using the Naginata, and it was it was working for me. So, I don't know. I feel like that weapon got a nerf recently, and we don't know about it just based on <laughs> using it. Um, but then y'all decide to use the Punisher as a quite a bit i guess on your medics and your engineers i'm guessing definitely on the medics yeah we we've pushed that a lot is that just for the uh heal grenade thingy uh yeah i mean partially that's a super strong ability right like to clear conks and uh, and the heal is good uh, i so, forgot like, it cleared conks so that does yeah, make yeah. it a lot more useful yeah um it's not as good a gun as like the terminus for example but uh, that utility kind of just pushes it over the edge for, for this kind of format. Um, just add brings a lot to the. For the medic, basically. Okay. Is there any other, is there any other loadout type decisions you guys have made as a team, um, that you'd that, be willing to share? Yep. Hmm. Uh, are there loadout stuff? I I'm, I'm just curious if you have. Have you like? Well, I mean, is there anything the... else that you guys have come? You know, whether it's, implants or just. I mean anything. I, that's why I'm. Not, that's why I'm asking. Uh, if, if there well, has been any other discussions about, you know, like oh, strong associate have punishers. Is there anything else? Oh yeah. Um, we we've, we've like recommended Naginata, Betel, that sort of thing. That those are kind of obvious as well as like safeguard is super obvious. Um, that's so fucking strong. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you uh, are fine to cuss. Gun. We are rated 18 plus. Right. You are okay. <laughs> Trust me, I cuss all the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shotguns is something we've pushed because people are like, man, shotguns are not, you know, they're like, you know, people don't have a very good perception of them, but they're, if you want to win, they are, they are strong. Although honestly, I don't know if, I still don't think many people use it. I don't use shotguns because I like the Naginata. Um, <laughs> other thing, I th we've gotten everyone to remove their camos, which is, which is kind of fun. Um, oh, but that gets rid of the fun. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You have to at least, I will, you have to let anyone that has grinded the brilliant camo use the brilliant camo. Oh, of course. That is the I one mean, camo not... they have to let, you have to let them use. <laughs> we're not mandating that people take their camos off. It's all recommendations. But, uh, yeah, anything else? I, I think that's about it for, and, yeah. A little hesitant to bring it up, but, um, obviously both sides are affected by the, uh, um, the, the lag or the hitching. Um, yeah. 
Uh, obviously, we want the devs to fix it. Obviously, it's, it kind of kills the mood a little bit, but how big of a deal do you think it actually was? Like, how, how much did it actually affect you guys? Uh, man, uh, it's, that's hard to say. Um, like, overall, I can't really imagine it affected the teams, like, disproportionately, uh, to put it that way. But, like, individually, I mean, you're shooting someone, and then, like, hitch happens, now you're shooting the floor, and then die. It, it yeah. It was annoying at times. I mean, it, yeah. I don't think it, like, lost us any holds or anything, but, yeah, it was, it was annoying. Uh, I do notice that SKL decided to go to the map room for a group photo. Hmm. I might have to get in on that. <laughs> um... The one thing I noticed and I thought was a great move from for SKL at the start was y'all using the anti-lock-ons to start because, you know, in that start, you're all on aircraft and not everyone's a great pilot. So if you're not a great pilot, lock-ons are amazing to actually use to mm. hold, to do damage and maybe kill someone. But by using the anti-lock-on, you negate, you know, one of the things that helps the newer pilots are those that aren't very familiar with the pilot or familiar flying. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was, it was good. Uh, it's also like, we know, uh, has got the striker, right? Like that's, it's super, super strong. So that helps. One thing, again, we were worried about was like a flak nest from mid. I think they did it against can one. So they had tons of strikers and shit there. So, uh, that was on our mind. We brought that lock on, Gal. And we also just had, well, I'm telling you too many strats, but we had one <laughs> one galaxy for each squad. So uh, it was just the utility of having a Gal is also really, really good because people die and then they green point to the Gal and then get to whatever map, whatever base. I need more batteries. Um, I am in need I'm not sure. I'm sure you guys will batteries. look at the statistics, but y'all actually came out ahead on kills. Um, we don't usually do that. Yeah, 1,300 kills for y'all, uh, about uh, roughly about 1,000 for mid. So y'all came out with o about over 300 kills over mid in the fight. So that was a great job in fighting that through that way. Nice. Nice, yeah, I think we're just a little bit more organized. Um, User joined your channel. It's one of the big changes, so that, that helped a lot. And there's Master Jiraiya. Um, so... Welcome, Master Jiraiya. Um, we've already kind of... Can you hear me? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Perfect. We've kind of already grilled uh, Calamity for SKL. Um, <laughs> so if you'd like to start, um, let's get a little bit about you and the team real quick so that way everyone knows who y'all are that's watching right now. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Jiraiya. I'm the leader of uh, Voltage on TR. Um, yeah, I PL'd mid tonight. Uh Mid is a collection of uh, our group, Volt, as well as Frost, uh, the Anointed Legion, uh, otherwise known as TAAL, or, and Postal Service of Araxis. We all kind of came together uh, to form a mid-fit company to, uh, you know, just have fun, play some Outfit Wars, you know, see how far we can get. And yeah, we're all, we're all kind of the same kind of mindset outfit. We're smaller infantry-oriented outfits. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty much the premise of it. Alrighty, and I'm going to let Snipe, he asks some great questions, turn it over to him to ask some questions to you. Um, sure. And I'm sure there'll be some back and forth between you and SKL for this. So the the standard first question is just your, your opening, kind of what your thoughts were, how you think it went, um, and just, yeah. I think our opening went pretty well. Um, we got air control pretty early. Um, that was kind of the whole plan, because against SKL, or, um, against Goder in our first, uh, match, um, we had a lot of air to deal with. Uh, and then with KN1, they got the air control pretty, uh, locked down, so we kind of figured air was our weak spot, so I'm glad we kind of turned it around on this match. Um, uh, and then, yeah, we just had the, uh, we had our ground troops doing what we needed to do. So I think uh, I think our opening play went fairly well. Well, then as as we saw, you guys hugged that kind of northern as it played out. You ended up moving that northern lane. I, at, I mean, at what point was it early on? 
or at what point did you decide to just push the lane and not worry about the back caps? Oh, we didn't worry about the back cap. Well, we worried about the back caps until the very end, I would say. That's when I made a bad call. Uh, obviously, we'll get into that a bit more if we choose. But uh, I'd say we, we focused on back caps for most of the match. We at least tried to. Um, our air squad kind of was alerting us to some of the back caps going on, and our leaders were reading the map. So feeding the PL information, sit reps, it was pretty useful to have. So, um, because you, you capture, oh, now I'm mind blanking what the name of the base was, the one before Nexus. Um, you uh, capture Argen that. Argent. Argent, yeah. Argen, yeah. yeah. Um, so you capture that pretty shortly after, maybe even before, you had lost the base behind you, and you decided to go all in on Nexus. Yeah, so that was that was a bad call on my part. I take full responsibility for that, and actually I think that got us the loss right there. Um, so what happened is um, we were fighting on Hydro. I think that's our back rectangle base. Um, Sounds about right. So we were fighting on Hydro. Two of our squads were there, and then um, we managed to push SKL off, but they charged back in with a bunch of maxes. And then when Volt wiped, uh, that's when I called an all-in on the Nexus, because we already had two squads there. Tau was leaving to go uh, to go assist. Um, they were going to steal rain their maxes in, and then we were going to leave and head there as well. But what I think we should have done was stayed there and continued to contest SKL off the point. Uh, that way we wouldn't leave our Nexus open to attack like we did at the end of the match. Pretty much lost because of that. Um, I'd say we had a pretty good shot. Um, if we did pull off the all-in on the Nexus, I think SKL had almost perfect timing on that orbital right at the start of the Nexus fight. It killed every single one of our maxes, and we barely recovered from there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and that's the that's one of the things that we saw between the two fights. You guys basically fought for the entire seven minutes. SKL, because of the back caps, they only fought for four, four and a half minutes, and that that's a big difference. And when when it comes to medic resources and stuff like that, um. So just kind of going back real quick, you're kind of talking about it. So, did you see the last two, the Nexus and the other bases back cap? Did you actually see that, or were you so focused in on the all-in, you didn't even notice it? We saw it. I knew that by leaving Hydro, that it was going to get taken. And I knew it was going to open us up, but I, I should have made a better call. Uh, we did notice the back caps, but we kind of fell in on our strategy with... Uh, what happened with Goder? We went all in and we won. Um, in the K and one match, we didn't go all in and we lost. So I decided to put us all in in hopes that we could win. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't work out that way. I mean, right? Cause if, I mean, if it did work, <laughs> we right, wouldn't you, be having this you, conversation. You, you, you'd be the hero, right? It would be like, call your genius. You know, it's it's the nature of it. Yeah. Well, it's the. Uh... It's the responsibility of the PL to take respon well to take responsibility of the of the loss and share responsibility with the win. It's a very good motto to live by. Um, we asked uh, we we were seeing some unique things well not necessarily unique but just things that kind of stood out um, with SKL such as um, their they had a very heavy Punisher presence um, and so we started talking kind of about their kits and kind of you know things they've come to together as a team being like oh we suggest this right that we're we're highly encouraging this is there anything you'd be willing to share obviously we don't want to give away your secrets but is there anything willing to share when it came to prep and you know what you guys kind of decided as a team when it came to loadouts kits stuff like that yeah so when there's it's it's a little bit harder when there's four different outfits um because it's the the duality of it is you want each group to play to their strengths and how they're used to playing you don't really want to change too much of it because then people are uncomfortable, you know, and the performance drops a little bit, right? Uh, as I can speak as far as Volt goes, we uh, we run a standard loadout um, for each class, and each class kind of has their own jobs once we hit a base. I won't go into the specifics of that, but yeah, we are running under barrels. Actually, I think I only got like five kills this match, again, because I was running the under barrel Unity so much. Uh, but yeah, as for the other groups, I mean, I just, we, we let them play to their strengths. And I think that really worked out because there's a couple of really good pilots in Tau. They were kind of our air 
our Air Force and PSOA had, has their armor ability that a lot of um, the other people in the other three outfits don't. So we let them use their buses to blanket the anti-air. But as far as infantry limits, I, I can't really speak for the other outfits. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and did you guys, so before you guys decided to come together for Outfit Wars, did you guys play together before that? Together? <laughs> or was this like a, as Outfit Wars was announced or whatever, you guys were like, hey, let's do this, and then you finally start playing together? So, we, the, the way it happened was kind of funny. Uh, we obviously know each other because TR Command is pretty active. We try to, we, we have an alliance on TR Commands where, um, we, we clean it up if people are being dumb. We tell them if they're, we tell them that we're going to mute them if they contribute negatively to the comms. Um, and it's like six of the largest outfits. So we, we're around. We, we know of each other. Uh, I think Frost and Tal play together quite a bit. Uh, and I think PSOA joins them once in a while as well. Uh, sorry, if I, guys, if I'm wrong on that, but Volt was kind of always a loner. However, uh, it was funny. We were we were doing ops, and we dropped on. Uh, oh, I'm gonna blank on the base now. It's next to our Axis firearms, our Axicon substation. We dropped on our Axicon substation, and they were like, "Oh, hey, it's Tal. Oh, hey, here comes Frost. Oh, and So is here too." And then they invited us to a platoon, and we stomped so much that night. And then we were like, they were like, you guys wanna, you guys wanna play Outfit Wars with us? And we were like, fuck it, you know, like. <laughs> oh, it was nice. a very last minute thing. I mean, last minute, but sounds pretty organic, which is kind of cool to see. Yeah, um, yeah. Um. I just want to say, now that I have some airtime here, SKL, GGs. First of all, you guys, your timing was impeccable on several occasions. Uh, your back caps on Bitter Gore, your stoppage of our, our back cap on Argent. Thank um, you. Yeah, and I mean, just, we we did get on your Nexus again after we got pushed off, but there was too much of you on our Nexus, and mm -hmm. you guys just, just have timed us. So GG's from all, everybody in mid, that was a fantastic match. Yeah, good, good we had a, game, We had guys. a lot of fun. <laughs> that was awesome. Yes, uh, great game for both teams and everyone that played. Um, just so give a shout out to Bagel Dude from SKL and Kim Strike. Yeah, Kim Strike, both um, from the mid team. Y'all, those were the most kills for both sides. Um, I do want to know if Bagel Dude can give me a bagel because now I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Kim Strike, man. He is all the all the leaders of all the um, the outfits in mid. Just love love him to death. All right, I gotta go, guys. Yep, have right, a good one. Interview. I think that's all I have um, for mid SKL. Yep, thank you for the time you gave us. Um, any questions left from you, Snipe? Um, the one I always like to end with um, is there any is there a team that you want to fight? Like, who are you looking? Who who, who do you hope you can fight before the tournament's over? I'll let Calamity go first on that one. <laughs> Man, yeah, I don't know. Anyone who's next up is is great. I love playing new outfits. Hopefully not. Well, I don't want to say hopefully not, but don't really want a third rematch with one TR. But uh, <laughs> uh, that, so right now, at that point, it looks like y'all may be playing SKL may be playing KN1 next week with oh. mid fit, possibly playing. Go TR, maybe? Ooh, rematch with Goater. Okay, <laughs> I like it. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, as for us, well, I can't speak for the rest of but I mean, I want to fight Recursion. I think it'd just oh. be a fun match. I know other couple guys in there. And we haven't fought a TR outfit yet, so I want to fight one. See how chaotic it is. All fair right. enough, fair enough. Thank you guys. Um, hopefully Hashtag fix the hitching. Fix the hitching. Uh, <laughs> as we've said, we are not affiliated with the devs. We have. <laughs> we are just providing the streams. Um, we cannot <laughs> fix hitching. We don't know what's causing it. We can't. That is not us. So don't. I know. Don't. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, but some people I'm come in and want us. I'm spreading the word. <laughs> I understood. Just want to make it clear. We do not know what's causing it, and we can't fix it. 
We can just ask for it to be fixed. Same as everyone else. So uh, thank you guys. Hopefully uh, y'all have good debriefs and have a good week. And we'll see y'all back next yeah. week. Good job. Thank for you guys more for matches. Shaming. Thank you guys game, for guys. shaming. See ya. Yep. Thank y'all. Bye bye. Take care. From your channel. User disconnected from Alrighty, your channel. Snipe. So as we're ending this off, we got one more week left of the, I don't know, the round robin, I guess. Qualifiers. Qualifiers. Um, and then it will be down to the top eight making the playoffs, which right now could go to we multiple got, teams. So Goblin Jumpers and Bushido Way are both undefeated. So they are guaranteed in. They are guaranteed in. They're, 100%. Yep, they're guaranteed in. Um, and then we got the Recursion, Vanu Cats. I would HMPN. probably say Vanu Cats is guaranteed in. Um, due Hale, to Step Vanu, 1TR, Neil No One, Recon Team 6 are all 2 and 1. Yep. I think 1TR and Cats may almost be guaranteed in as well because they do have such a high um, points so and with winning two to one so now if someone else I guess it all just depends on how it goes next week depending on how many of these I, two it, ones it, win I mean you would think that these teams wouldn't get completely blown out but if they get completely blown out who knows um, yep. those scores might be a big factor when it comes to the tiebreakers and yeah, and so uh, it's just one of those things. And, and it's really hard to know, too, because until we know for sure who they're playing next week, right? Like, it's hard to make that judgment about how we think they're going to do. Yep. And um, the schedule doesn't come out till midnight tomorrow night. So we yeah. still got over 24 hours before that even comes out for we know who's playing next week. All we can do is uh, wait to see and um, hope that they... Um, oh, it's... Obviously, the sooner they can fix the hitching, the better. But at least I, I, I would hope by the playoffs. Yeah. That at that point, that's when it really does matter. And if, if they want, um, this game mode to be successful, uh, they need to provide a smooth experience for those final few rounds. Um, to not, obviously, taint it for the participants. Yeah. I know there's still some bugs with the observer camps too. Um, I believe that the patch notes said that we should be able to see the outfit tags at all times, but. They weren't coming I, in. So. I didn't see them. <laughs> I saw some, but yeah, once once you figure out who's who, it's kind of easy to figure it out and hold it as long as it's not two of the same teams or as long as we can see the colors of each team. That was very hard when it was red and red. So it looks like uh, War Pigs and VSA's fight is still going on. Do we uh, do we know who's hosting that? Uh, I don't know. Is anyone hosting that? Uh, it looks like Plantside Battles 2 with Verunda and Hannibal Forge are currently streaming that. Never hurts to jump in, right? I'm trying to see if I can get in to see what it is, the match. I know. Gotta love those ads. You know, I'm a mod on the channel. You think you won't get ads as a mod? <laughs> um, and then, of course, I get a Zaxby's commercial. So, of course, now I'm hungry. So, guess... let's see. 16 minutes left. Um, ISV has eight. They're pushing Nexus. Pigs only has Nexus left. Okay. I'm going to post it in chat, so if you guys want to go watch that match, you can. Um, other than that, we're probably going to be ending this stream. Um, are we still down for Shatterline after this snipe? Uh, yeah, I might need a quick break, but yeah, uh, um, I think I'm down to try it out. Yep, all right, so I will see you back. I'll just end this stream, and I will jump into Discord with you in just a moment. All right, and thanks to everyone for watching the stream. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Like I said, I will be ending this stream. Um, I'll be switching over to a new game that just came out, a uh, free to play game called Shadowlands. Snipe, who was here just a second ago, and then also with uh, Finger, who was one of uh, the other members of AT, so maybe we'll see how that goes. A brand new game. Got, you know, so we'll give it a shot. Other than that, 
Thank you all for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream, and we will see you all next week with another round of Outfit Wars.